What's up, y'all? It's your boy AJ Trip, and we are continuing with our top ten list. The word according to me, or anyone you want to call it, it's your boy AJ Trip here. And Monday we did the top ten defensive plays in NFL history. Yesterday we did the top ten wide receivers in NFL history, and now we are on to the running backs, the top ten running backs in NFL history. So let's get started. We've done number 10 with Marcus Allen. And I think Marcus Allen was a tremendous running back. Uh, we do know that he had some troubles with with Al Davis in the end of the career. But and, and if, you know, and I think that I'm not, I'm not necessarily sure why, you know, why it was. But whatever happened. No, I can't. I can't remember the, the full thing. I remember watching, you know, doing watching the Marcus Allen football life. But whatever, whatever it was, and I forget what it was. But they just, you know, they fell out, and and he was just, just wasn't there, and everything. So, listen, you can't, you know, he would have had a lot more touchdowns. He had a lot more yards than he did. If you would have kept playing, and I, I don't think it was the thing with Bo Jackson. I don't think it was that because Bo, they, they both played at the same time. They both were wearing the block for each other and everything. So I don't think it was it was bringing in Bo Jackson or anything like that. It was just you know they just sat him down on the bench and didn't play him for years, and that was just awful, pretty for the most part. Um, but uh, but he was a great running back when he did play, and he proved it. He great. He had so many uh, touchdowns and so many. You know everything that you had to just say yes. What a dominant, dominant running back he was. So number ten on my list is Marcus Allen. Number nine. I know some people say, "Wow, the all-time leading rusher is number nine. Yes, Emmitt Smith is number nine. And I, I really do think it is because of the offensive line. He had a tremendous like thing with Ezekiel Elliott right now. Ezekiel Elliott has a tremendous offensive line. So. But when the people around that you know that played in this era, like the number the number two all time uh, guy uh, on my list, you know, it's just it was a total different thing. I mean, he uh, I, he was all time leading rusher because of the offensive line, and I think it was, it was given to him. But that doesn't mean that damn it, no, stop yawning. I don't, I don't think that doesn't mean that he wasn't good or he wasn't even great. He was great. He's a Hall of Famer. There's no doubt about that. He deserves every. He was a big part. That was probably the biggest part of these three championship uh, teams that you know the Dallas Cowboys had. That being said, I don't think you know when you're looking at it for this. I think you're looking at it for the other point. I just don't see. I think you really do have to take in advantage of the offensive line and some of the stuff that happened. Some of the stuff he did. I don't think he wasn't a breakaway guy. He wasn't a guy that was gonna hit the long runs or anything like that. He was a consistent guy. He would get you four and four and four and four yards other than those two times down in Philadelphia where he didn't get nothing from the Philadelphia Eagles, but that's okay. He was a tremendous running back against the NFL's all time leading rusher and I think give him all the credit in the world. I just think that he's number nine should be number nine on his list. And that's Jimmy Smith. Number eight, Adrian Peterson. I think Adrian Peterson, they, yeah, this is a guy that was down. He didn't have great offensive lines. Uh, and, but, you know, they were good, but they weren't great. But he made the best of them. And, the, 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 you know, c coming back, having that ACL injury, MCL injury, and he coming back the next year and rushing, almost breaking the single season rushing record. You know, the, he, you know and he holds the single game record. He's at like 297 or 298, something like that. You know, and he did, did it when he was a rookie. And there were just so much other things that he did. Now, he had a little bit of a fumbling problem, but he's been dominant most of his career. And listen, he's now in New Orleans and really, I, I, know, they, I know they have Mark Ingram, but I think it really would be foolish just not to ride Adrian Peterson. You know, this entire season, if you're not New Orleans, just ride him. Ride him. This, he's, he's got something to prove, and I think he, this could be another fantastic year for Adrian Peterson. One of the all time great running backs, and I think he deserves definitely to be on his list, and he's number eight on mine. The top 10 running backs in the NFL history. 
Number seven, O.J. Simpson. I think O.J. Simpson was he was the first guy to eclipse the two thousand yard mark, and he did it in fourteen games. Oh, and he did it twice. Yes, he did it twice in fourteen game seasons. O.J. Simpson. He was for the longest time the 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 holder of the single game rushing record. Did it on Thanksgiving. He was the only member. He was the only one of the Buffalo Bills. Right, the only the only star that they had. And you remember watching the OJ documentary, you know, he knew it. And he always gave his lineman credit. And I was, you know, and I think the lineman they they liked OJ for that. And they were happy OJ would do that for him. So he was without a doubt a fabulous running back. He gave it all to the Buffalo Bills, and he was. Just an epic running back. He was a, he was great in college, even better in the pros. O.J. Simpson, number seven on my list of the top NFL running backs of all time. Number six is Curtis Martin. Curtis Martin is the only running back in NFL history to go over a thousand yards his first eleven seasons. No other running back has even done that. Barry Sanders did ten. Curtis Martin did eleven. And I think from the Curtis Martin um, football life, I think there was even that 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 uh, that eleventh season or that tenth season, maybe I think was one of those seasons he had an injury, and like the eleventh season would make him the oldest running back to to win the Russian title. I think that that's what the eleventh when he got into the eleventh season, that he became the oldest running back to win a Russian title. He was fantabulous. You know, his first years in England, and he went to New York, followed Bill Parcells there, and he became even better there. He was truly masterful in his run. Again, he, he also was not a guy that was going to break long runs for touchdowns or anything like that, but he was definitely, he was a, a force to be reckoned with. Curtis Martin, an all-time running back, number six on my list. Number five, Eric Dickerson. Now, this is a guy that could, you know, um, that could break long runs. You know, er, you know, Adrian Peterson, it's about him running up right. He the one started. He ran up right and he was gone and he you know he he see he set the rushing record record in eighty four and in eighty five, uh no, it was in eighty three, I think it was in eighty four, that's when he broke the record at that twenty one oh six. We all know that as 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 the NFL twenty one oh six, uh in eighty in eighty four, so it was just incredible. Then he, then he came back in 85, he had 1,800 yards. So, uh, again, so, I mean, he was a, he, he was, he was a terrific running back. You know, he, again, talking about his football life, you can tell that he was, you know, he was very confident of what he was. He knew that he was the best and he should be paid like the best. And that, and that set him off and then they, he got traded to Indianapolis where he went there and he became, you know, just, he was still just the same guy, just as good, just as great as he had been, but Eric Dickerson, Los Angeles Rams, Eric Dickerson was probably when he was the best, Eric Dickerson, and when he was the greatest, and when he was, when you, when you can say he was, he was maybe on his way to being an all-time great, and uh, I kind of, I do kind of think that the trade to Indianapolis may have slowed that down, but there's no doubt about it, he was, he, he was, he, he was, he was great. He was the number five running back of all time. Number four is Marshall Falk. Marshall Falk. I mean, come on. He's one. He's the one of the only running backs. Uh, I think there's only maybe, you know, maybe only two. Possibly, maybe it might have been three. Maybe David Johnson did it last year. I heard something about David that you know, David Johnson. But I don't remember that being talked about. But maybe David Johnson did get it. But what the stat I'm talking about is that to be a thousand yard runner and a thousand yard receiver. Roger Craig did it. Marshall Falk did it. David Johnson might have did it last year, but um, Marshall Falk, he, he was he is he he was the the centerpiece of the greatest show on turf. Uh, if, if they didn't make that trade for for Marshall Falk from uh, Indianapolis, right, and 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 just taking that to you know, Indianapolis, you got Adrian James out of there, so that was a, that was it was a win win for everybody. But bringing in Marshall Falk. And you have the ability to run the ball with him and catch the ball with him. And then the the, the passing, you know, with uh, Kurt Warner and then um, 
Bruce and Hope and everybody like that. This was just, he was a centerpiece and he was fantastic. He was the ultimate competitor. He was the, never gave up, never surrendered. And, and, he, and then even in the, as he got into his career, when they drafted Steven Jackson, he showed Steven Jackson the rope so that when he led, when it was time for him to retire, Steven Jackson would be able to hold his own in St. Louis, and that's exactly what he did. And it, it, uh, it, it, it's just a certain professional. I, I enjoy, I, I enjoy watching him. I enjoy more of his, uh, his, uh, his stuff he does now on NFL Network. He's become a terrific analyst. So, Marshall Falk, number four, of the greatest running back of all time list. Number three, LaDainian Tomlinson. There was at one point I did think that he was going to be the greatest running back to ever play this game, LaDainian Tomlinson, because I just thought, you know, the ability, the ability to break it free, you know, the consistency, he, he, he's the first running back to catch 100, 100 balls in the season. Um, and, I just, and I just thought that he was going to be I can't tell you, I cannot describe to you things that I, I, I thought he was going to do. And, and, and I think, uh, and I think just like in this day and age, it just, it really just, it just hit the wall for him. It just hit the wall. The last year in San Diego, and then he had to go to play with the Jets. And even though he had some, a couple of good years with the Jets, they weren't like the years he had had prior with San Diego. And uh, I think that's unfortunate. If he could have continued and kept it going, I think I, I really do think he would. He, I don't know if he would make it number one, but he would probably be number two on this list. But I right know he's number three, but he's an all-time great. He just went into the Hall of Fame this year. Congratulations, LT, the offensive LT, and um, it is without question one of the great, great running backs, one of the great players in NFL history. Without question, Ladainian Thompson. Number three, the all-time running backs list. Number two, Barry Sanders. And I enjoy the hell out of Barry Sanders. He was, in, he was playing for Detroit. I'm a Bears fan, as you can see. And I had to watch him twice a year. And I hate the fact that he had to, right, my Bears had to play him twice a year. But I loved watching him run. I loved watching him do everything. He was able to break tackles, get in holes, slip and slide. And it, the thing about Barry Sanders was even crazy because you know, he has so many yards. You know, he has so many. I, I think he is like the all-time leader with, you know, in in being caught behind the line of scrimmage for a running back. You know, so, you know, and I think, you know, if, I, 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 I do think that is. I mean, he's like, he's an all-time leader. But that being said, he's still like the number three all-time leading rusher. And, that, and, that's, and that's because that's his ability to break free, get out in the open, the run against the Bears, his soldier field, when he's just breaking the tackles and spinning and running down the sideline, the, the game, the run against the Patriots, where he's turning guys into screws and, you know, just juking them out of the left and right and everything. I mean, just the amazing stuff that he would do on the field is just was just so exciting. I think the one knock against him and maybe reason why he's probably number two on this list is because when he got down to the goal line, they would take him out. And whether that was, you know, on the coach or whether that was actually Barry Sanders maybe, you know not being able to, you know, get that they got get that we have a running back to get that short yardage, whatever. You know, it's kind of like the thing with Emmitt Smith in the offensive line. Maybe it's an unfair thing, but I think you get to put sort of all into togetherness and Barry Sanders. I think that takes away from him. Also, a little bit takes away from him the fact that he just quit as early as he was. Just, and, and listen, you understand why the Detroit Lions were losing. They were not winning. He had no prospects of winning a, winning a Super Bowl with, this, with the Lions. You know, so he retired when he thought he needed to. And, and that's perfectly fine. But I think that I think everybody feels Barry had two, at least two, maybe three good seasons left in him. He would have broken the all-time league rusher, would have shattered the record, and he probably would be number one, but he's not. He's number two on the top ten running backs in the NFL history list. And number one is Sweetness, 
Walter Payton, the greatest of all time, point blank period in a discussion. <laughs> you know, I don't want—I I don't want to do one of those videos, but I might if someone comes at me wrong. Um, I mean, they didn't come at me wrong, but they just come at me with you know, ridiculous stuff that I have to shoot down. Um, but yeah, Walter Payton is the greatest running back of all time. There's no doubt about it. He can block, he can run, he can throw, he can receive, he can pass, he can catch, he can everything. He did everything well. He did everything perfect. He only missed one game of uh, in his career with a sprained ankle, and he was uh, he was a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous guy. You know. 12 years. This last year it was unfortunately the spring shortened year. If he would have came back in '88, I think you know this. You know that that you know that '88 was that, that year. Or was it '89? It was one of those years. I think it was '89 80, when the Bears were in the championship game against San Francisco. But he, you know he could have been in the championship game again, and he could have made him win the Super Bowl. He came back in '88. But that's neither here nor there. He retired when he did. He retired as the greatest running back of all time. He still is. There's nobody else because in this day and age, running backs don't do that. You know, you you you, you know, you give you give running back the four years, you know, under contract, and then you give them the you know, another four year contract, and then you throw them to the side because in this day and age, that's how it is. You know, it's, and, and they run a two back system, two or even three back system. Nobody's like the bell cow anymore. They get to 25 times. And that's because, you know, once you get to 30, you know, the body breaks down most of the time like that. But, you know, it's, I read, I read, I, I feel that, you know, it's just the way it is. There's going to be, I think there is going to, there's going to be a running back in the near future that's going to defy the odds, you know, and they are going to be great at 34 and at 35 years old. They're going to have the thousand yards and they're going to break. Emmitt Smith's rushing record, and they are going to have all of the touchdowns. There are more touchdowns than Jerry Rice, and they are just going to do everything. They're, they're going, they're, their name is going to be at the top of every rushing record there is, and we're going to name him the greatest running back of all time. But right now, it looks like Walter will be number one for a very, very long time. And as me, as a Bears fan, that's happy to see. Happy to tell you and happy for it. All right, y'all. Post your comments down below to me what you guys think. Oh, you know what? Before we go into the end of the video, let's obviously talk about the obvious omission here, and that is Jim Brown, right? I know people are going to look at this and say, where, are, where is Jim Brown? Jim Brown should be on his list. He should be top two, if not number one. Well, here's the thing about Jim Brown, and I, I, I've said this before, and I, uh, I put this on Twitter, and some people didn't think it was a perfect, uh, it was a great explanation, but I, I, I do think this. I think that Jim Brown is overrated. Um, listen, but what do they say about Jim Brown's career? He was the strongest, he was the biggest, he was the strongest, he was the fastest. Well, okay, if you're the biggest and the strongest and the fastest, of course you should dominate. Of course you should. And that's what Jim Brown did. He dominated during his time in the league. And that's perfectly fine. You know, still the all-time leader in uh, yards per carry average. I think we're 5.2, 5.3. Okay, that's perfectly fine. You know, and then there's also that thing about the fullback. Was he a fullback? Was he a running back? Whatever. It, I, I don't take that into consideration. But that, I don't even know like that. The fullback, running back, that doesn't make a difference. But if you're the biggest, you're the strongest, you're the fastest, you know, you should dominate. And I think that just like the offensive line with Emmitt Smith and just like, you know, Barry Sanders being taken out at the goal line, that has to be a part of the entire focus when you talk about a play. And I, I think, I don't, I don't think Jim Brown is way down on the list. I think he's probably somewhere between 11 and 15, obviously. But I, 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 he's not in the top 10. He doesn't deserve to be, in my opinion. And, you know, and so it is what it is. Jim Brown's not, you know, he's not better than those 10 guys I have on the screen. I actually believe that. Great player. All-time great, Cleveland Brown legend, all of that. 
They don't think he deserves to be in the top ten. So now, post your comments down below. Tell me what you guys think. Think about everything. The top ten list. Thoughts on Jim Brown. Any other guys that I missed? There's a lot of guys out there that were, you know, that deserve, that, that are definitely well deserving. Um, you know, just you know, so many, you know, Hall of Famers and things like that, and other running backs. Um, I'm trying to get to them right now, but I think I've got a good uh, top ten list. I think they're right there. And, and listen, let's let's also stick the obvious to Bo Jackson. If Bo Jackson didn't get hurt, or if Bo Jackson just played football and didn't play baseball, I think Bo Jackson would be number one because he was he was kind of unstoppable. He was was the technical bowl game makes made him out to be. I mean, he was that guy without question. So, um, yeah. Well, yeah. Put your comments down below to me what you know you guys think. And as just like every all of these lists. These come from what I did on Ranker slash on my Word According to Me blog. So, down in the description box is the link to my Ranker profile. You can go there and then you can click on the, the, the all, all of the lists and then you can create and, create and make your own list. And then publish it to the world. Even do a YouTube video on your own one to, to combat mine or whatever. It's, it's perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and let's have a good, great conversation about this. This is fun. This is fun. This is this. Yes, the end of That's what Mr. Man would say. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's this is what it was. So like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You definitely want to subscribe because coming up tomorrow, the top two quarterbacks of all time, and I've already done a video on the top two quarterbacks. So. We might be going to revisit that a little bit. And, of course, Friday, the top 10 slash 15 Chicago Bears of all time. So, yeah. You're not going to want to miss these two, so make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. As always, thank you so much for watching. Good to each other, y'all. Be careful out there. And I am out.